I'm Scott Gilliland, the year of 06, Trinity High School. Um, well, back when we were in it, we didn't have the Senate Bill 111 or anything, so it was more of a trust issue with Mr. Newman of knowing that uh, not just depending on how many hours we got, but just the quality of the education we were being given, um, being prepared for college overall more than you would be with AP, um, and also obviously the you know the parent uh, nudging you in the back saying go ahead, go ahead and try it. Um, you know, because we really didn't have anything to lose back then, because if we ever got out, you know, as it is today, you just go back into the AP classes, so kind of a leap before you look. <laughs> It, it was definitely difficult. It's a lot, you know, it's definitely more rigorous than AP, but not to the degree that it may sound, you know, because when you first look at it, you see the 4,000 word essay and the, you know, several 1,500 word essays, and, and you think that, oh no, this is going to take forever. But now, you know, I think it's better to have written those because I can crank out a 1,500 word essay in a couple hours if I have to. Whereas, you know, if I hadn't had to do that before, it would take me much longer. I'm able to do research and study and I've got my, my time organization habits down more than I would have without it, so. I think the, the best thing about IB is that the teachers are, they, they are not allowed to be teachers of just English or just math or just science. They're the IB teacher of English and the IB teacher of math. And in that way, they have to work together. And, you know, in AP, if the teachers aren't communicating, you might have, you know, five different projects due in a two-day period, and that can be extremely, extremely frustrating for a student. Whereas in IB, um, the teachers, if they know that, you know, in physics, you have a test coming up this Thursday, well, the English teachers are going to assign a major project due that same Thursday. Um, so, you know, they, they're understanding, they know what everybody else is doing, and so, it forms a cohesiveness with your stu with the students and the teachers, and you know you work together to try and get everybody through it. So, going into college, it's kind of weird at first because you can literally do whatever you want, you know, to a degree, obviously, but. Um, it, you're waking up and knowing that you have to go to class without anybody telling you, having to study for tests, that you may only have three or four a semester, and that's your grade, um, it really takes a, you know, a drive or discipline that I don't know I would have had without being experienced to something like that with the IB program. I would say one is don't be afraid if you're not a good writer at the time because they say writing is very important and it is but it's I think it's more important to do IB if you're not strong in writing because it will help you be prepared for college because it's not going to change in college whether you're a good writer or not they're going to still expect you to be a good writer and so if that's one of your weaker suits you may want to do IB just for that purpose of getting your writing up to level and also just to Stick with it because, you know, it's two years and people say that, you know, you're not going to have a social life and your friends may be telling you that you're a nerd or whatever. But, um, you know, I mean, I was involved in tons of activities and IB not only helps you once you're in college, but getting into college. I know that colleges really like to see my schedule and, you know, the, the classes I was taking, the, the IB program definitely now that it's starting to get recognition is something that stands out to uh, college review board members or whatever. Um, looking at a student that has IB on their credentials as opposed to one who does not, so.